Hello and welcome to a tabletop bellhop cardboard coat check where I'm going to be taking this massive box and opening it up for the first time. I am Mo Tuzno, the tabletop bellhop, your cardboard concierge, helping you make your game nights better by showing you off what you get in the box. For number four in the city collection from Queen Games, this is a bunch of games from Stefan Feld. Some of them reprints and some of them brand new games that have been released by Queen Games over the last couple of years. This one is one of the brand new games. This is not a re-release of a previous Steffenfeld game or a re-theme. This is a totally new game that includes one of my favorite things of all times in all board games, and that is a cube tower. Though in this particular game, you do not put cubes in it. And I'm sorry for covering up my face. This box is so damn big, it barely fits on my camera. So what I'm going to be doing today is opening up this box. I do have to thank Queen Games for letting me take a review copy of this home from Origins Game Fair. Greatly appreciated. I am a Steffenfeld fanboy. I'll admit it. I love Steffenfeld's games. Some of my favorite games of all time are by him. And I am really looking forward to this because I also like medium to heavyweight euros. And that's exactly what this is. It's a point salad. There's so many things going on. I can't wait to dig into this game. But step one is going to be opening the box. So join me as I crack open my copy of Marrakesh. All right, so so here you have my copy of Marrakesh. All I've done at this point is crack the shrink off. And of course, the most noticeable thing here is this is a massive box. This, this game is huge. This is going to take up a lot of room on your shelf. Um, another thing I would, I'm going to call out is Queen Games is a German publisher, publisher uh, prints their games in Germany, have switched to doing more green things. So this has they actually earned the Green Games logo of germany which is pretty cool i'm going to show off the sides as best i can but because of how tall this is you can't really see it all that well but what i will note is that i like the fact that if you store your games vertically the labels one way on one side and if you store them horizontally it's the other way on the other and it's also like that so if you go either direction so that's pretty cool um so again this is uh, the new well, I don't know if it's his newest game at this point, but a, a new game from Steffenfeld. Uh, a lot of the games in the City Collection were actually reprints of older games with new themes. So I have not seen the inside of this box. Um, I've not even done a demo of this. The only version of Marrakesh I've seen is the new edition, which is in a smaller box with less deluxe components that is more accessible. This is, of course, the big box. I, I wouldn't say deluxe edition, but the, the big box fully featured edition from Queen Games. And look at that. Look at the wood and piles. There is no insert here. There is just a ton of stuff piled in this box that I'm slightly intimidated by. And I'm not quite sure where the best place to start is, which I guess we're going to go with the top. So what I'm going to do is kind of slide this box off to the side and I'm going to put the components out here. So there is a massive bag here filled with baggies filled with wood. So there are a whole bunch of wooden bits in here and then um, one extra bag. Kind of strange. So I'm going to start with this and open each of these up. And I'm not going to show you the individual components. So they call these Keshis. They are the like resource that you're going to put around on your different boards that represent different things. There are 12 different colors of these. So what I have in front of me here is the pink, black, white, and gray. Now, I'll hold one of these up, but I'm not going to do this for every bag. So what you have is cylinders. But the nice part is, is they are octagons. And that is a great thing because that means they won't roll away. I love it that most publishers have realized cylinders are not the best shape for board game components and to stick to things of different sides. Now, one of the things they didn't do, which I would have appreciated, though I don't know how you do it with 12 different shapes, is if each of the different colors was a different shape so that anyone with color um, vision issues would be able to tell these apart by touch. But then these are going into a cube tower so that might have affected that so fair warning there are 12 different colors of these and already there is a tan and a white that looks very close to my eyes and that is the majority of this this to me feels like the halloween bag so first bag was gray white pink and black then we have blue red green and tan and then we have yellow brown purple and orange so those are all the catchies that's the majority of the wooden components um, there are also two stands in here that are going to hold um, two of the cardboard pieces we'll find later. And then we have the actual player pieces because this is a worker placement game as well as like a, a round tracker. Um, and it looks like, yes, yeah, scoring markers in each of the colors. And I've got to say for worker placement pieces, I love these because they're big. 
I don't know if they're supposed to be heads. What they're, what they're, yeah, I think I'm pretty sure that's like a head of someone wearing a fez is the shape they went for. It's very abstract, but I love how chunky it is. It's going to be really easy to look at the board and see where place pieces are placed. Now, to go with each of these, there is a disc. Yes, I have the yellow disc with the red person. But there you have that. And that's it for wooden components in Marrakesh. Now, I'm just going to put all these back in the bag. And for now, I'm just going to toss them in the box lid as we move on to the next thing in this massive box from Queen Games. This is a baggie. It looks like a baggie. It doesn't even say Marrakesh on it. It is just a cloth black bag that you will be pulling Keshis from. Then we have the rule books. Uh, yes, okay. Oh, I dig this. I actually like this. Okay, so what we have here is the rules for the game um, in German. Hopefully we find English at some point. <laughs> All right, hopefully there's English rules in here. If not, I guess I can find them online. Um, and what I love here is a glossary. So it's separate. I love the fact that there's a separate book. That, oh my gosh, look at all the different tiles. That just summarizes what all the tiles do and the board spaces do. And the whew, Stefan Feld point salad right here. And then we have the rule book, which though this is in German, I'll flip through it quick. Yeah, how to set up. I, actually, it's, it looks like a really solid setup diagram. Queen Games is really good about color coding their rule book. So I do appreciate that. It looks like they stuck to that. Yeah, everything's color coded, so it's easy to find. Oh, and then how to... So it's it's not that thick, really. This is special rules for less players. They're only like 13 pages, though that's a pretty small text. Oh, and then showing off all the other games in the City series, which I'm sorry, I want them all. I, I am partly a board game collector. I would like all of these here, please. Can we Can we just have all of those? All right, hopefully I find English rules in here as well. I don't know if that's a buyer beware issue, if they're not in here, if that's because it was at Origins. We'll put those aside. Uh, this is the cube tower that you're going to build at some point. That's what we have here. I, I am not going to know what all these pieces are, but there's the like the funky punch outs to make sure not everything falls through. Camel token who follows Stefan Feld, so that's the first player. Tokens. Um, these go on the river. And do things at the end of rounds. Again, not a teach. And I have not played this. Show both sides. Then we have summary cards that are very thin. Ridiculously thin. But they are of that like thicker, won't tear easily paper. That's fine. I, I, I greatly appreciate they exist. I, I think this is a game that's going to need it. Um, these are in English. On both sides. No, German on one side. I'm going to guess English for books in here somewhere. Um, this is one player's top of their board that you would put up here. And, and what you can kind of see here is it's dual layer, but even more so it's almost triple layer because you have two layers here, but then there's even, you punch holes out and then it uses the table to have a spot to hold the Keshis. So it's almost like a triple layer board with only using two layers, which I thought was very cool. And what you can see here is part of the board here. Um, look at the, the. You can totally see the dual layers there. Extremely impressive dual layer looking boards. Um, <laughs> interesting black and white or blue and white art on the back. There we go. I see the English rules. I feel much better now. Man, look at that. And and again, these are all spots to hold those keshis, right? That's what they're called, the little cylinders. But then there's a bunch of other stuff that also goes in here, like a dial. Um, this is one player's board. So this is what you would have in front of you with this at the top, your resource board. See how they match up? This is not the main board that goes in the middle of the table. This is for one player. So I'm thinking total table hog here. And yes, here we have English instructions and the addendum, they call it in English. So cool. Very good. Happier about that. Um, again, player boards. You're going to have these for everyone. I will note this is often a problem with dual layer boards that um, there is some slight warpage here. But it's slight. It's not bad. Um, the other thing I hadn't noticed is that blue back. Well, that's the player color. This is the red player's board. I don't know if they're any different, if there's any asymmetry to the boards. And then there's the yellow player's board. Looks like they're sticking to the standard blue, yellow, green, red, which for better or for worse, standard board game colors, which can be a problem for some 
gamers with vision issues. So there you go. Four different player boards. Then we get to the actual game board because I know this is a big one. This is the actual player board. Does that fit? No, I got to get further back here. You can see the actual player board here. Nice, big, solid board. There's just some art on the back. This has all your spots where you're going to track all the things. Obviously, you have a track to go up here. You've got the river up at the top here. This is not dual layered. So there are tiles and stuff that are going to go on here. This board is not dual layered. It's a standard four panel board game board. More punch boards. So again, random baggy. There's a few, been a few of those throughout this box as I've gone through. All right. Oh, that's heavy. That, that This is one. Look at this thing. Look at how much this is folding out. All right, that doesn't even fit on the camera. And I'm on the boring side. So let's see if we can flip this. There we go. Now you can see some of the stuff. So these are player screens to hold which caches you still have. Uh, these are various items you can collect. These are the what you're going to have to feed your people at the end of every round. So they're going to need water, money, or figs or dates. I can't remember if it's figs or dates. My bad. You've got the resource tokens here. These go on the player board. This is part of the dice tower, the or cube tower. The cube tower is going to go here. And then when things fall out, they're going to place them onto the appropriate colors. So, yeah, just massive. Like, look at that. that. That's one of the biggest punch boards I think I've ever seen. Mr. Feld and his point salads. Okay. And uh, everything's like twofold. Sorry, I bumped it. Look at this thing. Cardboard. This is why they talk about this card, this, this hobby as cardboard or punching cardboard, or um, is another awesome podcast you should check out. Um, or why I call this a cardboard coat check. So this is like uh, resource things. These are gates you can buy. These are the, the, the money and water, more resources. These are the oasises that go on your deserts. There's just so much in this. Look at all this stuff. And it's all really well punched. I've had a couple kind of pop out as I'm doing this. And then another, oh my God, it's another massive one. Holy cow, look at it. It's another one. It's another huge one. These are all the scrolls. These go on top of various buildings you can collect. Oh, my stuff's getting in the way here. Here. Look at them all. Yes, one is punching itself. You can see it hanging there. Look at all the scrolls. I don't like I I could this could be my desktop background. Look at that. The amount of stuff in this game. See what I meant about punching itself when he can't because it's off camera. There. We got to the bottom of the box. Wow. I, I This is a... If you played Steffenfeld games, it just feels like I just unboxed a Steffenfeld game. There's just so many tokens. I don't think they gave you nearly enough baggies in this particular copy, but that's fine. I've got enough baggies of my own. I think this one's begging for a box insert of some sort. Though, man, making a box insert for a box this big? Oh, my arm's sore. Like, my arm's tired. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I think I've done a few unboxings before this one, but... Oh, wow. And, and there's no, like, good way to box this either. It's just kind of ugly. Sorry, Queen. I'm not calling your game ugly, but, like... I, I, you know what? I gotta say, no. I'm gonna give them props. By making them functional for the players, not designing them to fit a box size. Honestly, no props. I'm, I'm disliking it as someone repackaging this, but like as a player who's going to play this game, I actually appreciate that, that you, you weren't worried about your box design when you designed, you know, your player boards. Oh man. Boom. There's just so much stuff. And I did find English instructions. Just slightly concerned. Just because I picked up the copy at Origins, right? Instead of, you know, picking it, buying a copy. I don't even know. Oh, it was a little place for the cashier. I poked. Poked. I poked. And to be fair, like, yeah, this is a this is a massive box. There's not a lot of air in here. There's some. And I get it. This is a standard queen size box. If you own Shogun, Wallenstein, um, that those games came in this size box. It's not like it's it's a ridiculous i've never seen a game this size before um despite starting with an m it's probably going to end up on my shelves with shogun and wallenstein plus it's a cube tower but it belongs with shogun and wallenstein right like it's a cube tower game all the cube tower games have to go together all right there you have it the um somewhat ridiculous amount of stuff you get inside 
Marrakesh, uh, City Collection number four from Queen Games, featuring a new Steffenfeld game that looks fantastic. And and this just, I don't know, it bled Steffenfeld. You, you can just tell. There, there's so many things to collect and so many things to do and places to put your stuff. And I'm sure they all give you various amount of points. And it's going to be a total point salad. But you know what? I love those. I love point salads. So, oh, one of the heaviest games in my collection. This might even beat out Gloomhaven. Uh, Marrakesh from Queen Games. Which, man, I, I am... My wife is the one that's like, no, no, you got to unbox Marrakesh next. And I was like, yeah, okay. But now that I've opened it, I don't want to play some Marrakesh. Does play two player. I have plans this coming weekend. All right. Thank you for joining me for this unboxing video of Marrakesh. Uh, once my wife and I do sit down and play this with each other, two player, and probably with some of our friends eventually, I will be sharing my thoughts on the Tabletop Bellhop blog at tabletopbellhop.com. On our podcast, the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, which you can find on your podcatcher of choice. We're on all the big ones. Um, just don't bother on Google Podcasts because that's going away. Might be gone by the time I record this. I don't even actually know. Um, but yeah, check out our stuff. Um, if you dig this video, if you appreciate what we do, if um, you can uh, support your bellhop, tip your bellhop, I guess, at patreon.com slash tabletopbellhop. Thank you for joining me for Marrakesh from Queen Games.